Hello everyone, Neil Tappin here from Golf Monthly and welcome to this video in which we're going to be offering some advice on how to play risk and reward par fours. Now every golf course has them and they can be real make or break moments for your scorecard, so playing them well is really important. Now the advice we have in this video comes from Eddie Pepperell. We're here at Frilford Heath Golf Club in Oxfordshire. This is Eddie's home club and Eddie's gonna play the second hole on the green course, a real make or break risk and reward hole. He's gonna talk about his strategy and how he thinks about his game, how he manages his game and how he builds a game plan to help him shoot the lowest score possible. Guys, if you're new to the golf monthly channel please do hit the subscribe button to make sure that you don't miss any of our videos hit the like button if you like what you're watching but let's head out now onto the golf course at Frilford Heath to find out about Eddie's risk and reward par 4 tips right so Eddie second hole on the green course par 4 for you this would be a fairly straightforward drivable par 4 right it was certainly drivable, um, quite tight up the left, so you know you have to take it on. I mean, they uh, they introduced the out of bounds on the uh, putting green, so if you do leak it right, then you're in trouble. So okay. uh, yeah, so there's um, stuff to think about then. On it's this a team. it's a fun little hole. Yeah, I mean, this used to, like as I said, this would have been the finishing hole originally. So a great finishing hole if you've got a good round going and you know you can make an eagle or you know it's, it was always quite good. But uh, yeah. Good opportunity, I suppose, now to get your round under the way with an eagle. So, let me ask you then about shot shaping. So, what would be your natural kind of go-to shot shape that you would you would go for? Well, I tend to find a fade pretty easy, or a slice certainly easy, and a draw almost impossible. So, uh, I'm always working hard to just hit it dead straight. Uh, okay. Um, I, and I try to hit every club dead straight, apart from probably my driver, which I know fades a little more. So, with this three wood, you know, I, if I can hit it dead straight, then that's a good move for me. And um, that's often what I try to do, yeah, okay. to be honest. So, so, okay, that's interesting because a lot of people would feel like they have a natural shape that they're trying to sort of rely on under pressure in particular when you're, that's not the same for you. No, I, I, my natural shape when I'm, my natural shape would be a fade, but that's a sign that I'm swinging poorly, not a sign okay. I'm swinging well. So if I'm swinging well, my natural shape is very straight. Um, and so it's simple as that for me, really. Let's pretend that I'm your caddy on this hole. Yeah. What's the conversation that you're having with your caddy? What, what are you trying to figure out in order to get make sure that you leave the ball in the best position possible to make eagle or birdie? What, what are you thinking here? Yeah, well, this is quite, it's quite a narrow green here and the pin is pretty central. So, I mean, this is just a simple case of aiming at the flag and trying to put a good swing on it. Um, I don't think he would be saying anything overly complicated to me here, you know, You've got a bit more room left than you think, so you can trust just that you can trust that. Although visually it looks like you haven't got a lot of room. I know there's a little more there, so you haven't got to be afraid of that. So it's just just a case of putting a good swing on it, trusting it. The caddy would be aware of that. This isn't a shot that requires a whole lot of discussion. I wouldn't say, um, to be quite honest. Okay. Yeah. And so you've gone for three wood instead of driver. How far's the hole? I think it's about 270, 275. Okay. So um, this is a, it's a good number really for my three wood, and uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's give it a go. All right. Good shot. Just on that bunker on the right there. Yeah. So greenside trap, which should do with that. Well, it, yeah, it's close to being very good. Um, wasn't a bad shot. Just. Is it a bit long? It could be a bit long. That actually, a bit down breeze. So. Yeah, I'm not, I mean, you know, maybe I could have hit five wood and tried to draw a five wood. Um, it suits that. Yeah. And, you know, I carry my five wood 250, 255, so that would be a smart play as well, potentially. If this was a hole where you had an option to go for it or to lay up, and let's say it wasn't an obvious one like it is here where you're definitely going to go for it, yeah. what's the, the thinking when you're laying up? Are you trying to leave yourself a very, very specific pitching yardage? Yeah, often it would be probably not to get too close, um, right. you know, yeah, and, and that, but that will probably depend a bit on ground conditions, where the pin is, if the pin's tucked at the front, you know, you're going to leave yourself a bit further so you can get some height and spin. But if you're comfortable being up and around the greens, which I usually am, then, you know, I'm not often thinking too much about that. It would just be, I suppose, where the pin is, 
you know, and, and, and ground conditions would d dictate a little bit um, what, what, take what, what you would tee. do off the tee. So you're sort of, yeah, so you're working from what the pin's doing back to what your strategy is from the tee. I would say so, yeah, I would I would say so usually. Uh, and, and obviously laying up on a short par four is sometimes not that, it's an easy shot, but sometimes it isn't that easy because it's too easy. Yeah. You know, you don't concentrate, you don't focus, and then you can put a lax swing on it and hit yourself in not a great position and you're kicking yourself because it's just the most simple shot you'd face in a round. Yeah. But, um, yeah. You know, it can be uh, usually, usually drivable par fours require, well, you're, you're just one good swing away from an eagle putt. So it's a classic, you know, risk reward really. Yeah. And, uh, and more often than not, you see guys take it on. But, um, you know, there'd be some holes where, although I could get there, I wouldn't probably go for it, if depending on where the misses were. Um, but, you know, that's that would be based a bit more on my history. Are, are you, when you look at your fellow tour players, would you say that you're more on the, Aggressive side or the defensive side? Yeah, I'm probably not on the uh, aggressive side, although often I'll take a shot on, um, just maybe not good enough to pull it off but uh, <laughs> <laughs> all the time. But um, yeah, I'll often take shots on. But then again, you know, there's, yeah, I, I know I'm good with my wedges as well. So, and there's tournaments I've had in the past where I just keep hitting it in hazards, taking it on. So, you know, it's a, it seems a simple shot, but things can just draw you in. So it really depends on where your miss tends to be with a shot. Yeah. Because, you know, when you're going for a, a short par four, a risk reward shot, it's funny how your swing changes a little bit and, you know, that you're almost that bit of extra angst to hit a good shot can affect you. Right, so Eddie, wrong club off the tee, I think. Yeah? See, I'm useless without a caddy. Arguably with a caddy too, but um, <laughs> certainly without it. Uh, I guess it goes to show how hard it is to pick the wind on tree line golf courses, that thing, because you're not surrounded by the wind the whole time like you are on on Lynx courses, are you? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, there's a bit of help there. And I suppose we'd have 275. And it goes to show what we're talking a bit about with the strong three wood. It's particularly strong when you flush it. So um, yeah, I probably could have hit five wood there, but as it turns out, I'm not out of bounds, I don't think. And uh, I don't have the hardest shot in the world. So no. I got away with it. Here's how an amateur mind, my mind, would work on a shot like that. I'd be thinking, whatever you do, do not go left. Cause I'm looking down the left-hand side here and it's just lost ball territory isn't it yeah are you thinking at all about that um not really you know it's there um but you know uh it isn't it isn't hopefully at the forefront of your mind as a pro to be honest and you're just trying to put a good swing on it a good move you should know you know what ball flight and start line you're expecting to see so um that would be a quite a bad shot yeah um, and and you can't count for that really if you hit a really bad swing then you hit a really bad swing but yeah, that was a bad one. That would be a bad one. Okay, so uh, shot that we're facing here, talk us through the challenge of the shot and how you'd be looking to play it. Yeah, so really this is just, uh, I've got to just loft up a 60 a little bit. I've not got to hit a flop shot. Um, it's just getting a bit of height on the 60 on the lob wedge. It's back into the breeze, so that helps. And um, really this is, again, a fairly simple shot. It just requires you know, commitment and a nice bit of feel really just to get into the shot and, uh, and loft it up. But uh, so yeah. two questions. Firstly, are you thinking about where you're going to pitch it? Is that something that you've got? Yeah, so here, you know, I can see that I've got to pitch it. I can see that I've got to pitch it over that ridge. So right. therefore it tells me I need the most lofted club in my bag, really, because I haven't got an option to pitch it short and run it down the hill. So there's that. You'd look at the lie. I've got a nice lie and uh, and I've got a bit of help wind, you know, into my face, which is going to aid the shot. So all in all, it makes it quite a simple shot. Um, it just requires this commitment and, and feel at that point, really. So, second question then, how, how are you adding that loft to the shot? Yes, well, if I was just going to set up normally like that, you know, some guys go hands back. Um, I tend to actually open it a bit to the right as well, the face, and aim my feet a little left and just, you know, work across it a little bit. Um, I don't think this is a shot that requires a Matt Kuchar style loft shot or even see Donald play, you know, hands back, square face square up. I don't think this requires that. So um, yeah, it would just be a simple case of just, you know, hands a bit back, face a little right, aim the feet a little left and just swing across the ball a bit, to be honest. Make it sound That sounds simple. simple, doesn't it? Okay, well, let's, let's give it a okay. go. So I've actually not quite hit that hard enough. And that's why that was quite an easy shot because that wasn't a very good shot, but it's, it's still 10, 12 feet. Um, you know, I just needed to hit it a bit harder. Um, poor execution, really. Well, you can redeem yourself with a good putt. Okay. So 12 feet or so for birdie. Um, and before we look at the putt, just how important is routine for you? 
on the green and also elsewhere on the golf course. Does routine play a role for you? Oh yeah, for sure. Routine is a very important part of, uh, of all of the guys, I think, on tour. It focuses your mind and, uh, yeah, you perform much better after a routine. So it's important your routine doesn't take too long um, because you want to make sure you're a pleasure to play with. But, you know, it's got to get to the point quickly and get you focused and, yeah, that's where it's important. Yeah, I guess it can play a role for all levels of player, actually, because it doesn't matter whether you're on tour or you're just starting out, you're going to feel under pressure, aren't you? Absolutely, and that's the whole point of a routine. You know, I can recall last year holding a couple of very important putts at the Players' Championship on the last hole. The British Masters had a five foot on the last hole. There were two very similar putts, left edge, five foot putts, and I knew they were crucial. And, and over the ball, you know, it, it was the same routine. It was, it was an out, deep out breath into my putt. Uh, you know, same amount of practice strokes, focus, and it's so important you you do that because when you do it right once and twice under pressure scenarios, it becomes this reinforcing thing where you know it really adds to the confidence and uh, it's important you do it. Okay. Sure. So can you talk us through what you do as you do it? Yes. Yeah, so you know, I, I'm going to line the ball up. Um, you know, this here is just a little from the left, I think. Uh, once I'm happy with the line, I'll get in. Um, I'll take two practice strokes usually, and during my practice strokes, I'm focusing either on the tempo of my stroke um, to make sure that you know it's what I feel like it needs to be, or I'm focusing a little bit on technique of the stroke. But then when I get over the ball, and this sometimes on a pressure putt as well, on a short range putt, I'll mention the breathing. I'll make sure that as I'm breathing, I'll make sure I take a nice long breath out once I'm over the ball, so that as I've fully exhaled, I'm ready to then take the putter back. I just feel like it helps me fully relax um, my arms and everything, so not too tense. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I've taken the two practice strokes. I'm looking up, looking at the hole a little bit, but I'm, I'm more worried about face alignment here, making sure my line is happy with the tight list. And uh, a wonderful putt. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, started it online but obviously the pace was well off so uh, yeah you know it's, it's just to go from there to be fair okay so there you have it that was eddie's advice on how to play the risk and reward second hole here at frilford heath uh, I, th I thought it was a really interesting insight into the sort of positive mindset that a tour player has and whilst you know we all as amateurs don't necessarily hit the ball in the direction we want to it could be really interesting and perhaps even useful as well to adopt some of that same mentality that the tour pros have guys before you go please do uh, leave some comments below what did you think about eddie's strategy what did you think about the way in which eddie sort of pulls together his ideas in order to build a game plan we would be interested to hear your thoughts uh, if you haven't done already please do hit the subscribe button to make sure that you don't miss any of our videos Hit the like button if you've liked the video. Uh, but for now, from Filford Heath, it's goodbye.